Hey, let me cut to the chase. It's bullshit. We did everything we were supposed to do, right? Got the grades, studied hard. But where the job's at? What if I told you, ooh, they're there, hiding in plain sight. You're just not using LinkedIn right. Yo, what's good? It's Terrell. Just Terrell. It's about that time again. Shout out to all the grads. Just finished uni. Starry eyed. Ready to take on the world. I'm gonna get me a job. Where they at though? Hey, yo, don't watch that. Man's been there, done that. I'm gonna take you on my journey from being a broke, unemployed student, couch surfing on my homie sofa. Fiending for a job to hear in Thai, well, maybe not that far, be here for fucking ages. From being a broke grad, get my first software engineering role. Just one month after graduate, three simple steps to getting that paper, man. I saw born, year is 2018. Your boy just graduated, masters in computer science for games. Yes, sir, I was a fucking nerd. But I digress, time to get fucking paid. Man's been two grand deep in his overdraft for like three years, so I'm done with it. I hop online, foaming at the mouth. Oh, the thought of making that software engineering money. I've been coding for six years, for free, you're telling me now I can get paid for this shit? Oh my god! So I get to looking, doing what pretty much every other grad would do, looking for grad roles. But they're whack. Pay, whack. whack. Responsibilities, whack. whack. Location, whack. whack. But you see, these regular engineering roles over here, they tight as fuck. I right, first things first, beggars can't be choosers. I wasn't getting interviews anyway, talking about the roles are whack. Well, seeing that everybody is graduating at the same time, man's got a standout from the crowd. LinkedIn is literally 24-7 marketing, so I've got to make sure my product is better than everybody else's. So, get your notebooks out, I'm gonna put you man on game. First things first, your about section. Tell a story. You're not a one-dimensional robot who sits in a room and just codes all day. It's a fucking hope not. There are reasons why you started coding or designing or whatever it is that you do. Someone or something inspired you and you went on your journey. So share that. Recruiters are literally reading through thousands of profiles in a day. Make them want to fucking message you, G. I right, sick. Now for experience. I know what you man are saying. Yo T, I'm just graduated. What the fuck do you mean about experience? Nigga, it all counts. Worked a paper route back in the day, put it down. Worked for a shoe shop one time, put it down. And especially, especially if you got an internship during your years at university, hey yo, what the fuck are you doing? Put it down. But don't be lazy and just put, oh, I just worked here for a month. Put what you did and what your responsibilities were. And if any of your old employers have LinkedIn, get them to write you a dope referral. I'm assuming that you're a good person, ally. Now, this next one's a fucking cheat code. This here carried me through my career and I know this because this was brought up at every single interview that I had. Make a portfolio website. If you haven't built anything, and I'm not including uni projects, you lazy baskets. If you haven't made anything, just get to work. Make some software, design some shit, but most importantly, do it for someone else, a client. You want to demonstrate in your portfolio that you can start and finish a project, a very rare but extremely valuable skill that is lacking in the workforce. So, you show that you can do that, man, your LinkedIn DMs are going to be popping like an Instagram models. And trust me, dog, I ain't lying, bruh. And last but not least, have a length profile picture and an interesting banner. Listen, attraction bias is real. 
People want to be around and work with people that look good. It just is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. I say nothing. Now your LinkedIn is pimped out, standing out from the crowd and shit. It's time to get this bread. Let's go. man saying make sure you jump in the discord community doing a push-up challenge next week and we got tons of other cool shit beat of the day skills to pay the bills and hands down the dopest community of ambitious youngsters it's our time to shine now some exciting news the justify applications this cohort have now closed and we've got the first person arriving this week we're super excited to start bringing some content related to that for you Donnies. Super pumped up to meet, train and grow with these Gs. It's going to be a madness. As a result, the applications are closed for a little bit. But check out the site because we've got some free shit for you there. And yo, this channel's looking to grow and up its production value. So, show your brother some love and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. My upload schedule is a bit erratic. These videos take a lot out of me. I can't lie. Well, back to the schedule program. Peace. So, you got your length LinkedIn profile. There's two ways for you to get a job with this fucking masterpiece. Actively or passively. Passively is when recruiters are coming to you, offering you job after job. Pretty nice feeling, swimming in abundance. The heights of your decisions are which of these high paying roles am I going to reject? But slow down buddy, you've got to walk before you can run. And that's where we have active job hunting. As a recent grad, this is where you're going to get the first licks of your experience. Your mindset needs to be as follows. Skills over bread. Listen, we're playing the long game. Look for jobs with things that you can do, of course, but in technologies or industries that you're interested in leveling your skills up in. If you want to be paid well, you've got to get stupid high level at shit. So good they can't ignore you. Once you know the roles that you're looking for, the second mindset that you need to embody is fuck a grad job. Apply for jobs that you know that you can do. See me, I took a risk with my first role. I went for a software engineering role, mid-level. I had a length profile, a banging portfolio, and a fresh trim. So these niggas had no chance. But I say that to say this, when you get a mid-level role above graduate, you're going to be given a lot more responsibility and therefore creative freedom to really push beyond your level. To drill this in, let me explain what happened with my first role. So I applied for this job and they're asking for C++ with a bit of Java experience. Tell me why, when I get this job, I was doing web development oh with Angular JS. Oh, no. I didn't know web development and Big Man Ting, man was stressing. Hey, what to do? Think or swim? Rose to the occasion, smashed it, and I bloody well got a new skill and all. Don't believe me? Check my LinkedIn. All there, buddy. So you found your dope role. Interesting, good money, a challenge, work that interests you? Say less. Listen, apply for what you can do, not what you should do. And oh shit, they like you and they want to interview you. Well, now what? You did it boy, get yourself a job interview. But you ain't got no experience. How the fuck are you gonna finesse this? Well, remember those projects that you did for other people? Oh, that's experience and some very valuable experience at that. Your portfolio is gonna play a huge role in your interview as it's your work so you know how you made it and why. Just tell your story. See, the interview is the easiest part. If you've got the interview, you've got the job on paper they're just grilling you to ensure that you're not just some weirdo 
and someone they can actually work with. Someone who's going to bring creative, fresh new ideas to the workplace, whilst also having the self-awareness to admit fault and to pivot without having any emotional attachments. Hmm, these soft skills are actually quite important, huh? Yeah, get your charisma up. You see me, when I got my interview, I was chilling, I can't lie. I knew everything that I spoke about in my CV and my portfolio. I was also confident in the job requirements and my ability to fulfill them to a high level. So the interview was going well. Busting jokes, spending code, all good. But then they asked me some shit about databases. Postgres, to be specific. Fuck, I've never done any work with Postgres before. So in that instance, I just told the truth. Yeah, I don't know. But I showed interest and made it very clear that this is something that I'm willing to learn about. After the interview, I had a good feeling that I got the role. And I did. And I know it's because of the following. As my old employer told me months after the fact, I was up against other engineers for this role with way more experience. As I was the only graduate who applied for this role. They chose me, the one with the least amount of experience over the others because I was open and honest, willing to learn. You need to be open-minded. You need to be willing to try new things and show that. The most important thing that you can bring to a knowledge-based role is applied creativity and social skills, especially if you're a software engineer. We need to fix our shit. Fucking old man. So, the three steps, they're simple. They're not easy, but they're simple. These are the same steps that I've used for the past four years and have taken me to where I am today. Your success in your career is highly dependent on your work ethic, open-mindedness, willingness to learn, demonstration of applied knowledge and charisma. If you can't do shit, learn first. Document your journey as it's a marathon, not a sprint. Here are some bonus tips to have a banging portfolio for your LinkedIn. Upgrade your skills, make things with said skills, make things for other people. Get evidence of this and document it in your portfolio. Iterate, level up and repeat. All right, so say nothing. I've linked both my LinkedIn and my portfolio down below. So check it out for a reference. I want to give a big shout out to Warrior of the Week, Young HS. Mum was involved in all of the challenges so far and especially with the skipping challenge, he went super ham consistent well after the challenge is complete i'm sure i'll see you in just push the next challenge that's coming up so join the discord for that i'm going to be fighting the 31st of this month training fucking hard yeah catch you man soon peace